Gordon was resting in the siding. Sometimes he thought, it's really tiring to be such a large and splendid engine. One does have to keep up appearances, so. Beep, 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 beep. Hello, lazy bones, whistled Henry. What cheek, spluttered Gordon. That Henry is too big for his wheels. Fancy speaking to me like that. Me, who has never had an accident. Aren't jammed whistles and burnt safety valves accidents? asked Percy, innocently. No, indeed. High spirits. Might happen to any engine. But to come off the rails like Henry did, well, I ask you, is that right? Is it decent? Then it was Henry's turn to take the express. Gordon watched him getting ready. Be careful, Henry. You're not pulling the flying kipper now. Mind you, keep on the rails today. Henry went off in a huff, and Gordon yawned and went to sleep. But not for long. Wake up, Gordon, said his driver. A special train's coming, and we're to pull it. Is it coaches or freight cars? Cars, said his driver. Cars, said Gordon. <laughs> Gordon's fire was slow to start, so Edward had to push Gordon to the turntable to get him facing the right way. I won't go! I won't go! grumbled Gordon. Don't be silly! Don't be silly! puffed Edward. At last, Gordon was on the turntable. The movement had shaken his fire. It was now burning nicely and making steam. Gordon was cross and didn't care what he did. He waited till the table was halfway round. I'll show them, I'll show them, he hissed. He moved slowly forward to jam the table, but he couldn't stop himself and slithered into a ditch. Whoosh, he hissed. Get me out, get me out. Not a hope, said his driver and fireman. You're stuck, you silly great engine. Don't you understand that? They telephoned Sir Topham Hatt. So Gordon didn't want to take the special train and ran into a ditch? What's that you say? The special's waiting? Tell Edward to take it, please. And, and Gordon, leave him where he is. We'll get him out later. On the other side of the ditch, some little boys were chattering. Oh, doesn't he look silly? They'll never get him out. They began to sing. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch all on a Monday morning. Gordon lay in the ditch all day. Oh dear, he thought, I shall never get out. But that evening, they lifted Gordon and made a road of sleepers under his wheels to keep him from the mud. Strong ropes were fastened to his back end, and James and Henry, pulling hard, managed to bring him to safety. Late that night, Gordon crawled home, a sadder and wiser engine. Two men were cleaning Gordon. My, my eye, Gordon grumbled. Shut it, silly. Did you ever see such mud, Bert? No, I never, Alf. You ought to be ashamed, Gordon, giving us extra work. The hosing and scrubbing stopped. Gordon opened one eye, but shut it quickly. 
Wake up, Gordon, said the Fat Controller sternly, and listen to me. You will pull no more coaches till you are a really useful engine. Gordon felt his position deeply. That's for you, and you, and you, Gordon said crossly. Oh, 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 screamed the trucks. Trucks will be trucks, said James, watching him. They won't with me, snorted Gordon. I'll teach them. Go on, and another truck scurried away. They tried to push me down the hill this morning, Gordon explained. It's slippery there. You'll probably need some help. I don't need help on hills, said James huffily. Gordon laughed and got ready for his next train. James went away to take the express. Slippery hills indeed, he snorted. I don't need help. Come on, come on, he puffed. All in good time, all in good time, grumbled the coaches. Earlier, a storm had swept Gordon's hill, blowing leaves onto the track. Even though the storm had passed, the hill was still difficult to climb. James knew this. The signal showed clear and James began to go faster. I'll do it. I'll do it, he puffed. Halfway up, he was not so sure. I must do it, I must do it. But his wheels slipped on the leaves. He couldn't pull the train at all. Help, help, whistled James. His wheels were turning forward, but the heavy coaches pulled him backwards. The whole train started slipping down the hill. His driver shut off steam and put on the brakes. Then carefully, he stopped the train. Gordon saw everything. Ah, well, we live and learn. Never mind, little James, I'm going to push behind. Clouds of smoke and steam towered from the snorting engines. We can do it, puffed James. We will do it, puffed Gordon. At last, they reached the top. Beep, beep, thank you, goodbye, whistled James. Poop, poop, answered Gordon. Goodbye. Then slowly he trundled back to his waiting trucks. One day, Thomas was at the junction when Gordon shuffled in with some freight cars. Phew, remarked Thomas. What a funny smell. Can you smell a smell? I can't smell a smell, said Annie. A funny, musty sort of smell, said Thomas. No one noticed it till you did, grunted Gordon. It must be yours. Not long ago, he had fallen into a dirty ditch. Thomas enjoyed teasing him about it. Annie, Clarabelle, do you know what I think it is? It's ditch water. Before Gordon could answer, Thomas puffed away. Annie and Clarabelle could hardly believe their ears. He's dreadfully rude. I feel quite ashamed. I feel quite ashamed. He's dreadfully rude. And to Thomas they said, You mustn't be rude. You make us ashamed. But Thomas didn't care a bit. That was funny. That was funny, he chuckled. He felt very pleased with himself. Annie and Clarabelle were deeply shocked. They had great respect for Gordon, the big engine. Thomas left the coaches at the station and went off to a mine for some cars. Long ago, miners digging for lead had made tunnels under the ground. Their roofs are strong enough to hold up cars, but not the weight of engines. A large notice warns them not to enter the area. Danger! Engines must not pass this board. Silly old board, thought Thomas. He had often tried to pass it, but had never succeeded. 
But this morning he had made a plan. The fireman went to throw the switch. Now for my plan, thought Thomas. Bumping the cars fiercely, he jerked his driver off the footplate and followed them into the siding. Come back, yelled his driver. Fire and smoke, said Thomas. I'm sunk. And he was. Oh dear, he said, I am a silly engine. And a very naughty one, too. I saw you, said Sir Topham Hatt. Please get me out. I won't do it again. I'm not sure. We can't lift you out with a crane. The ground's not firm enough. Hmm, let me see. I wonder if Gordon could pull you out. Yes, sir, said Thomas. But he didn't want to meet Gordon just yet. Down a mine, is he? <laughs> laughed Gordon. What a joke! Boop, boop. Little Thomas, we'll have you out in a couple of puffs. Strong cables were fastened between the two engines. Are you ready? He It was a lot harder than they all thought. At last, Thomas was free. I'm sorry I was cheeky, said Thomas. That's all right, Thomas. You made me laugh, replied Gordon. I'm in disgrace. So am I, said Thomas. Why, so you are, Thomas. Shall we form an alliance? You help me and I'll help you. Right you are, agreed Thomas. Good, that's settled, rumbled Gordon. And buffer to buffer, the allies puffed home. Gordon the big engine and Thomas the tank engine puffed buffer to buffer back home. It had been a busy day. First, Thomas had teased Gordon about the time that the big engine had slid into a ditch. Then Thomas fell down a mine and Gordon came to his rescue. Remember, Thomas, called Gordon grandly. United we stand, together we fall. You help me and I'll help you. I'll remember, replied Thomas, but I hope Sir Topham Hatt forgives us soon. Suddenly, they noticed something. As the two engines whistled into the sheds, everywhere they looked, they saw paint pots and painters. Bust my buffers, said Thomas. What's happening? Shh, whispered Percy. Sir Topham Hatt's going to tell us now. Ladies and gentlemen and engines, I am honored to inform you that Her Majesty the Queen herself is coming here to visit us. Now, on with the preparations. The engines wondered who would pull the royal train. I'm too old to pull important trains, said Edward. I'm in disgrace, sighed Gordon. He'll choose me, of course, boasted James. You, snorted Henry, you can't climb hills. He will ask me to pull the train, and I'll have a new coat of paint. Then the rain came. Henry's driver and fireman covered up their cab to keep dry. A painter was on the ladder above the line. Henry's smoke blew high into the air. The painter couldn't see. Both he and the paint pot fell all over Henry. Poor Henry. Well, you're not a pretty picture, sneered the painter. Sir Topham Hatt spoke next. You look like an iced cake, Henry. That won't do for the royal train. I must make other arrangements. Gordon and Thomas were waiting for him. Please, Please sir. sir. One at a time, replied Sir Topham Hatt. Yes, Gordon. May Thomas have his branch line again. And Thomas... Can Gordon pull coaches again? Hmm... 
I think you are both sorry and deserve a treat. Edward will go in front to clear the line. Thomas will look after the coaches, and Gordon will pull the train. The great day came. All the engines worked hard, bringing people to the town. Thomas sorted out their coaches in the yard. Edward steamed in. Beep! The Queen is here! Then Gordon whistled as he approached the station. Everyone knew that sound. The Queen's train glided into the station. Gordon was spotless and his brass shone brightly. Sir Topham Hatt stood to attention. Welcome, ma'am. The Queen thanked him for a splendid run and asked to see all the engines. Beep, beep, whistled Toby and Percy. Shh, hissed Henry and James. But Toby and Percy didn't care. Three cheers for the Queen. Beep, beep, whistled the engines. When it was time to leave, the Queen spoke specially to Thomas, who fetched her coaches. Then to Edward, and finally to Gordon, who took her away. No engines ever felt prouder than those on Sir Topham Hatt's railway.